Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Columbia Road Baptist Church Junior Church video. Um, I hope everyone's doing well, and I hope you're safe and healthy uh, during this uh, pandemic that's going on. Seems like things are starting to get a little crazy again. Sounds like the numbers are up, but whatever. Uh, let's go back to my original statement about three or four months ago. God is in control. Uh, we just need to use our heads and... and um, do the right things, do some social distancing, uh, wear our masks, and uh, do everything we possibly can to uh, stay healthy. So I hope that's uh, exactly what you're doing out there. Let's talk about something today. Who's the judge? Who is the judge? You know, we live in some crazy, crazy times right now. Um, last year at this time, who would have thought that we'd be dealing with all of these issues in the world right now? Uh, starting with the huge one of the pandemic, then we're going in and we're looking into um, our country and the, and the government fighting each other and constant uh, bickering. And then we have the racism that's going on right now and trying to, to fight all that and all these different things. They talk about the, the different policemen that, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of disrespect for policemen out there, which, by the way, I want to say, Let's not let a few bad apples ruin the whole barrel. Uh, I praise the Lord for our um, police officers and the things that they do. Uh, you know, there's millions, there's thousands of police officers out there. And they're not all like these, uh, these few others that have caused this big, huge problem in America today. And if you see a police officer out there, thank them for their service, please. They're having some rough times right now, too, with uh, disrespect and and uh, just having a hard time dealing with some of this stuff. Uh, they're people, too, and they're out there protecting you and me. And I know that every time I see a police officer, I do my best to uh, tell them how much I appreciate them. And um, I, I appreciate their service to, to our community. And I, I love our Fairview Park policemen here. They're wonderful people. Uh, they do a great job. I'm, I'm hearing good things all the time about how wonderful Fairview Park police officers are. But anyway, let's get back to uh, what I was talking about originally. Who is the judge? Um, first of all, when we think about a judge, one of the first things that we think about is the judge that sits with this black gown on, sitting behind his big desk in a courtroom. Now, I don't know how many of you all have ever been in a courtroom, and as young as you are, I would hope that you haven't seen a courtroom. Amen. Uh, but I have seen a courtroom. I've been, I've been on jury duty. Um, and I can tell you it's, it's, it's interesting the way uh, our justice um, ways work. Uh, the judge, he's back there, and he hears both sides of the stories, and, and he's going he's gonna to judge along with the a jury. Um, about a different case, about things that are happening um, in, in the case, whatever it may be. In my case, it was, um, it was a huge case downtown. I was on jury duty, and um, it was a, 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 a thing about um, whether there was a police entrapment in, in getting this individual. And apparently there was a bunch of other cases that followed behind that. And I tell you, it was crazy. And... Um, I was in the I was on the jury for that. I got picked to be the foreman of that jury, which was scary. Uh, this is a long time ago, and uh, we just had a hung jury. I mean, we had like um, it was almost a majority, but there was two people that just didn't uh, agree with us. And finally, uh, I made a statement to these individuals: "Can you tell me without a shadow of a doubt?" And they changed their mind. And so. I can tell you that the, the judge was involved in that because I would send a note back to the judge and I said, Judge, we have a hung jury here. And he was, says, we have, to have a, we have to have this thing settled. We need a decision. And with that said and done, we did come up with that decision. Um, but it was interesting to watch our justice um, ways and how things are, are done. Um, that's what a judge does. You know, you walk into the room and you usually got, now this one's a little better. Okay, this is... He's got a gaffel. Now, most of the gaffels you see in a courtroom would be, oh, about from here to here, and it's made out of wood, and the head's not as big. But uh, when people uh, get out of order, he might take that gaffel and start hitting it on the desk in a little place to hit it, uh, getting things back into order. He might use this to bring things to order, and 
he comes in, smacks it, okay, we're in the case right now. Or he might just hit the gaffle down on the thing when everything's done. But he's got that gaffle. So when you think about a judge in a courtroom, you think about a black robe he's wearing, you think about the gaffle that he has, you think about this smart guy behind the desk that's going to be help make these decisions, keeps everything in order so that when everybody's fighting and everything, he, he jumps in and says, okay, you either stop or you go to jail or whatever, okay? But um, he's a public official, and he's authorized to do all these things. That's what we th think about when we think about judges. Or let's think about this. When we... Uh, when we talk about a judge, we, we have, and I, I miss doing this, our bubble blowing contest in junior church, right? And I will give everybody a couple pieces of bubble gum. And um, at the end of our junior church, we'll, we'll sit there and everybody blows bubbles. And the person that gets the biggest bubble uh, wins. And they usually will win a, I, I, I buy them the giant candy bars for the winner. Uh, but to do that, we need judges, whether it be, uh, I'm usually part of that judging. I try to step back more on that. Uh, and I let Miss Shannon do the judging, and I'll sometimes pull, um, well, it's Miss Shannon or the youth. We always have a youth in there with us. They'll do the judging who has the biggest bubble. All right? So that's another way we can think about being a judge. I had the opportunity to judge one time on a chili cook-off at church. It was fun. You know, you, you take uh, bites of all these different chilies to see who wins that chili cook-off. So I was being a judge of that chili. Amen? So that's another way we can think of a judge, all right? But the part I want to talk about today is those people out there that are judging that are critics. The people that are out there that judge other people and don't even look at the own sin or the problems they have in their own life, but they're so quick to judge others for who they are, for what they say, for what they think. Uh, so many different things. And unfortunately, we live in a world today where there's a lot of people out there judging other people. Uh, this is not how God intends it. This is not how God wants us to be. If you got your Bibles today, please turn over to uh, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And uh, I want to talk just briefly on who is the judge. Now, we that's... A question that really is a simple answer as a Christian. God, in my opinion, is the only judge. Uh, he will judge at the end of our lives. He'll be the final judge on everything. But in uh, Matthew chapter 7, I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. It says, Judge not that ye be not judged. And that might be a verse you've already heard before. And if there's an adult listening out there, they have probably heard that many times before. But then verse 2 says, for with what judgment ye du judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Now what that verse is saying there, it's, it's very simple. God will judge you the way you judge others. And if you judge others harshly, that's how he's going to judge you. And boys and girls, uh, as a Christian, as we try to walk with the character of Christ, in our lives. Now, obviously, we're not going to ever be perfect in that, but we strive to be. We want to have his character. We want to act the way he wants us to act, think the way he wants us to think, talk the way he wants us to talk. Um, as we do that, we need to be careful in our own hearts and in our own minds how we judge others. Um, God wants us to love. God wants us to care. He doesn't want us to look at somebody and condemn them. He doesn't want us to look at somebody and judge them for, for what they are. Um, we really need to be careful. And this is something that I've uh, thought about a lot uh, lately in my own life as I look at this world, as I see the things that are going on, and I am doing my best to not judge others uh, but respect others. Uh, see, that word respect is something that there's not a whole lot of anymore today. It's either my way or that's it. Get out of my face. Um, that's really not the attitude to have. And that's what causes a lot of confrontation. There's no give and take whatsoever, whether it be in government, whether it be in society. Let's talk about this for a minute. Um, we talk about judging other people. 
uh, how do we judge other people? Well, uh, right away, I, I wrote down, don't judge for different religions. I am not going to judge you because you're a Catholic. I'm not going to judge you for all the other different religions that are out there, whether it be, um, uh, whether it be uh, Muslim, uh, Jehovah Witness, whatever. I'm going to respect you, okay? Um, doesn't mean that you're right, but I'm going to respect what you're doing, all right? I'm not going to be uh, condemning to that person. Um, if we're not careful, we can be so condemning to someone that what kind of a testimony as a Christian are you being to that individual, okay? Uh, don't judge for... Uh, nationality, where are you from? If you're, boy, I tell you, if you if you come from Russia, um, I don't want anything to do with you. Uh, don't judge if you're German, Italian, uh, if you're from the Philippines, okay? Um, any of those. Don't judge a person because of where they're from, all right? Don't judge a person if they're poor. I used to get so angry at, um, on the bus, when, when I was bus director at church for, for all those years, one thing that would really um, get me upset, excuse me, is when somebody would make some, fun of somebody because they had on uh, uh, some raggedy old shoes or clothes. And, um, you know, that would really just go right through me because it's like, why are you making, that might be the best that they can do right now. And you're, you're judging and making fun of them because they don't have a pair of uh, uh, Air Jordans or, or whatever they may be. Th those kind of things should not happen. And as a Christian, we, we, we can't act that way. Uh, don't judge because people are rich. You know, not every rich person is a snob, you know. Uh, sometimes people say, oh, a lot, of, a lot of times rich people are snobs. I know quite a few wealthy people, and they're not that way, Okay. We cannot stereotype and put people in a bottle and say, because that one is like that, they're all like that. And it's very careful what we need to do in our Christian walk, that we don't do that in everything, okay? Whether it be poor, whether it be rich, whether it be nationality or religion. Now I'm going to get to the one that's really uh, in, in the headlines today. How about skin color? Well... <laughs> Jesus doesn't look at skin color, all right? I, I love that song. Jesus loves the little children, all God's children of the world. Red or yellow, black or white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Can I tell you something? It doesn't matter what color skin you are. Jesus loves you. And somehow, some way. In time, people have decided that there are certain skin colors that are more important than others. Uh, God says, I don't look at the skin color. I look at the heart. I look on the inside of that person, not their skin color. But somehow, in today's world, we have turned things upside down, and we're making everything about race about the color of your skin. And that ought to be not that way. And I know that there's been some things that has happened in this world and in history. And I would like to think that as a country we could have grown past those and made that just what that was, history. And get to the point where we all can get along and we all can do what we need to do in society without all the bickering, without all the fighting, without all of the uh, racist things that are going on right now. And can I tell you, and a personal, it just breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. Do not condemn. Do not judge. And can I tell you, boys and girls, do not let society dictate who you are when it comes to these things. Uh, if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, and you're trying your best to uh, live a life for Him, and have the character of Christ, then don't let society dictate all these bad things that are going on when it comes to this stuff that's in our country now with racism and all these different things. We've got some uh, bad things going on right now, 
and evil things. I mean, there's things happening out there that just should not be happening. There's rioting and, and stuff like that. And I, I really believe with all my heart, it's not all just about skin color. It's all just about being evil. Ought not to be. And uh, here's what we need to really be careful of. Okay? Respect is a very good word. Um, in all of the years I've been doing junior church, I've always demanded respect from the kids. Um, and as I got older, I didn't have to demand anything. I would get that respect. And I appreciate that from all of our kids at church. I can tell you back in a time, though, when we did have a bus ministry, that um, there was a lot of disrespect going on as we would bring some of those inner city kids coming in. And I'm not judging because I love them with all my heart. And God knows my heart. And that's why I did it. But a lot of those kids, didn't they weren't taught that respect. And they would come in, and they'd be very disrespectful, and they would talk back. And then I finally told them, I said, you know, I'm not going to have this. You're going to respect uh, the adults here in this church. And there were times I had to actually say, you can't come back until you can show some respect. Respect is a very, very key word in our world today. Respect others for how they feel. Um, it doesn't mean that you're going to agree with them. If you respect somebody, you're disrespecting for how they think. But it doesn't mean you have to agree. And that's what we have to be careful of. Um, when, we, uh, when we have a difference of opinion, it's okay to share. And if somebody else talks about something, it's okay for them to share. But what happens is we all get angry and we all want them to change over to your way of thinking. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Mr. Haney, how are we going to deal with that? Don't, does that mean we don't go out and tell others about Jesus? Absolutely not. We are going to go out and tell people about Jesus. It's just the opposite. Our job is to be a witness, to tell others about Jesus Christ, regardless of nationality, regardless of race, uh, regardless of skin color, okay? And God will take care of the rest. But do it respectfully. And respect who they are as a person. You will get a whole lot further in life if you can respect somebody than if you are being dogmatic and making them, trying to make them do certain things. Um, Remember that as you grow up, boys and girls. You're growing up in a world today that's different from the world that I grew up in. And I can tell you something. If you can just respect people, uh, nine times out of ten, it's going to go a long way. I'm not going to tell you 100% because there are some people out there, even getting respect to, are just going to be belligerent and just give people a hard time. So, yeah, we're going to be a witness. Yes, regardless of what's going on, we need to... Be a witness for Christ. We need to tell others about him. We need to try to win people to Jesus. We need to tell them what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary. But we're going to do it respectfully. And if we have a difference of opinion, that's okay. Um, you know, I, I hear a lot going on right now um, with the pandemic and the masks and this and that and what's right and what's wrong and People are getting so offended about wearing these masks, and I'm not quite sure why, but um, this is my opinion, okay? There's others out there that have a whole different opinion, but I, I respect. If you don't want to wear a mask, I respect you for that. But if you're not going to wear a mask, stay away from me, okay? And what I mean by that is, let's well, social distance. I'm susceptible to this. I'm high risk. I've got diabetes. I've got, I'm an asthmatic. I'm going to be 61 years old, and I'm trying to be safe. I know how bad it is up there. I hear the stories of what's going on in these hospitals. I've told you, my daughter is an ICU nurse, and she had to deal with this pandemic and, and all of the bad, terrible things that were happening that people that don't think this is a real thing, they, they, need, to, they need to be a part of that and see how real it is. Um, you've got to be careful. So respect me for wearing a mask, and I'll respect you if you don't, but just keep the distance. Amen. Um, so what's the difference in there? What, what's that got to do with anything? This isn't about a mask or not a mask. It's all about everything else going on in our country. But I use the mask thing because it's a respect thing. You've got to be respectful. 
we've got to do what we need to do to get through this thing and, and this pandemic and, and get over to the other side. And at the same time, keep our eyes toward Jesus. Look toward him for strength. Look toward him for wisdom. Ask him to help you every day to not be judgmental. Ask him to help you every day to, to uh, be respectful to those that might not believe what you believe. But at the same time, let people know who you are for Jesus Christ and for what he did for you. Uh, this, this message this morning sounds kind of harsh, maybe to a point. But God does not want us judging other people. And when you start doing that, it starts causing some real problems. And I really, truly believe that's where we're at in our country today. There is no respect. Uh, the mentality of people nowadays with some of these things that are happening is just unbelievable. And they've turned it into something that it should not be. Um, Christian or not Christian, respect is a word that's universal. And it needs to be out there. Unfortunately, in the world today, there's not a whole lot of teaching on respect. I was taught growing up, you are to respect others. And I praise the Lord for my mom and dad and the things that they, they taught us uh, growing up. And, and there are parents out there now that are there's teaching their kids that. And, and I appreciate you so much. But there's also others out there that have... Uh, not taught their kids these things and those are the ones that are uh, going off on a different tangent in this world and um, a lot of what I'm saying some may look at it and say it's controversial I look at it and say it's common sense and uh, God help us in, in this country and in this world today the way that it is um, but God's in control and as we go and we look forward to what's going on in this world, we need to understand that God is in control and that we need not back off of who we are as Christians. We need to have that character of Christ. We need to have respect for others. We need not be so dogmatic that when we have an opinion on something, we're going to uh, be in somebody's face about it until they change their mind. But we need to be what Christ wants us to be. Bottom line is this, whatever you do, ask God to help you to be what he wants you to be. Uh, that's the important part. And whatever else is going on with everyone else, then that's between them and God. But boys and girls, if we can walk with the Lord and we can ask him to help us to be what we need to be for him daily, help us, Lord, to give us right attitude, help us, Lord, to say the things I should say. Help me, Lord, not to be judgmental. Help me to respect others, um, even when sometimes it's hard to respect others. That's where Christ wants us to be. He tells us to judge not that ye, uh, that ye be not judged. And then another, the other verse tells us, you're going to be judged the way you are here. And my prayer is that when I get to heaven, God's going to be pleased with the way I act here on earth as we go through our walk in life. And uh, I hope that you understand that this morning. And as, as I uh, talk about all these different things, uh, it almost sounded like I was going off on a rant, but I'm not. This is, uh, this, this preach is good. It's, it really does. Because uh, we got to be what Christ wants us to be in our lives today so that others can see him in us. So my prayer today is that um, you'll do just that as you uh, go through this upcoming week before we meet again on video next week. And um, let's, uh, let's go to some prayer requests right now. Um, we got quite a few, and a lot of these have to do with uh, some health issues. I know but with Alice Acri, I pray for Alice. Pray for her family with the loss of Rick Acri. You know, I can speak from experience. Uh, when you put people in the grave, that's not where it ends. It goes on for a long time after that. And um, you mourn and you uh, 
you miss them. And so pray that you'll be with Alice, uh, with, uh, with um, Jennifer and her family, the Salton Houts. Uh, pray for the Flemings, Kelly and, and uh, uh, Thad, uh, that the Lord will comfort them. And while I mentioned Thad, uh, pray for him. He just had surgery last week, took a bad fall. From my, it's my understanding they had to do surgery on his elbow and his arm, a uh, pretty extensive. Uh, pray for a quick healing there. That's, that's just a terrible, ter terrible, terrible thing any time of year. But when you do it in the summertime, and this heat, and you got to be um, uh, they got to immobilize that arm. It's just terrible, terrible stuff. So pray to the Lord to bless him and quick healing. Be with Doug Davis. Pray that the Lord to minister to him and his health needs. Um, last I heard, he was getting out of the hospital. I haven't heard if he's out now. If he is, praise the Lord. I pray that um, that they'll find some answers of what's going on with him. Um, pray for uh, Dina Kubik that uh, she has some health problems. She took a fall in a lot of pain. You know, just be, just pray for her and her health. She's had a lot of uh, health problems, a lot of medical problems. Let's pray for our unsaved family members. Um, Harrison's dad, I think of uh, Jack Williams' uh, grandfather right now. Continue to pray for him. I've been, we've been praying for him for years. Not going to stop praying for him. Um, pray for our government officials, all of our government officials, from the federal down to to the state officials. There's so much going on. Between the pandemic, between the racism, between all the political things that are happening, uh, our country's in a turmoil right now. Just keep your eyes on Jesus, and he'll, he'll help you through it. He'll help us through this storm. And uh, pray for our church leadership. I'll pray for Brother Bill. Um, he's got some uh, decisions that are hard to make sometimes. And he's, he's, he's pastoring a church right now in some tough times. He's got big decisions to make. And... Um, I, I just pray the Lord would help him to uh, to do just that, make those decisions. And I know that he wants to please the Lord with every decision that's made. So just pray for him, uh, for the leadership of our church, that the decisions that that we make as, as we deal with this pandemic are the right ones and that the Lord would uh, give him peace about that. So, And um, I pray for you. If you're out there and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, would you accept him today? Would you realize that you're a sinner? And because of sin, um, there's condemnation with that. You'll live in eternity uh, away from God. And But because what Jesus Christ did on the cross at Calvary, uh, you can go home to be with God the Father in heaven for eternity if you'd only accept Jesus and ask him in your heart and into your life. So if you'd like to do that today, please do so. Um, just ask Jesus to come into your heart. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. And I pray that, that Lord, you would just uh, come into my life and help me to live my life for you. I trust you, Lord, as my Savior. I, I pray that, that uh, you'd help me to live my life uh, for you. I turn it over to you. I believe that you went to Calvary, that you died, and three days later you rose again. You're alive today um, in heaven with God the Father. And, just, I now accept you as my Savior. And if you say that prayer, you've accepted him. If you've said it with your heart, not just your mind. Now let's ask the Lord to be with all these other different prayer requests. Lord Jesus, I pray for the Acres of Flemings of Slotten Hops as they deal with the loss of Rick. You know, it's been uh, weeks now, a few weeks, uh, but Lord, it hurts. Uh, sometimes it hurts for a long, long time. So bless them, comfort them. Be with Doug David, Doug Davis. On his health, um, I pray for Brad, uh, uh, Thad Fleming, that you'd be with him in his health, a quick recovery on his um, arm. Be with Dina, Lord. Watch over her. And, um, and Lord, I, I pray for all of our unsafe family members. I pray for their salvation, Father. And, Lord, I also pray for our government officials, that uh, proper decisions would be made, uh, that people would respect them as they do so, and um, help us to get over this thing. Lord, I, I pray for our church leadership. Pray for Brother Bill as he makes some um, everyday decisions and, and what's going on in this world today. Uh, minister to him. Give him strength and wisdom um, and comfort uh, through this, Lord. And Father, uh, help us all to keep our eyes toward you. Um, Lord, uh, the storm is, is raging right now. But as uh, 
her great pastor Jenkins says, the storm won't last forever. And Jesus is there to help us through. So, uh, Lord, I love you. I thank you and I praise you for who you are, for being my Lord and my Savior. Now, bless us this day and all we do in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, and I hope you have a, a wonderful day. Take care. We'll see you on a video next week.